Hello everyone, I've recently been a guest for several podcasts and YouTube channels and there were common themes and questions that came up. So I thought I would compile these questions and answer them here. All right, let's get started. Is it important to publish? It depends on what your career goal is. If your goal is to go into academia, yes, publishing is the currency of academia. You publish papers and prove that you can write papers and complete the study, and now you apply for grants. And after grants, then you do more research papers, and then now you're moving science forward. With a new publication, you get more grants. So it's the currency of academia, and you need it for promotion, you need it for a leadership position. But if you're not in academia, then you don't have to. You can see patients. We need wonderful doctors there. So if you are going to private practice, you don't need to publish any papers. Next question. Is research really important to match into residency? So it, this is, it depends on the type of residency programs you are getting into. If you are trying to get into a very competitive residency, such as dermatology, orthopedic, a lot of times publication is one way to weed out the applicants. That's the first thing. And second, when you are publishing papers, it proves that you are able to complete projects. You are able to do beyond what is expected. It also proves that you have what it takes to be a finisher. So that's why they use this as a way to weed out applicants. But for some programs, what is more important is clinical experience, especially for international medical graduates. What is more important is the fact that you have come to the US and done rotations. That is more important than research paper. But if you have both, that'll be great. But if you have to choose one and you only have one year, I would say prioritize on getting into a place where you can do clinical observership more than using your time getting into a research volunteer position. Next question, what to publish if you don't have much in terms of research? That's a wonderful question. We all have to start somewhere, right? If you are a medical student without any research background, like you did not do a PhD or master's degree, so how do you do research or even residency? There are many clinical programs where you don't learn research. If that's the case, first thing is to find a research mentor that is within your institution. That's the best way. You can also start with clinical projects such as case reports, case series. When you're rounding and somebody say, oh, this looks like a great case, jump on it. Ask, can I be part of this? Ask for this opportunity. You want to show that you have interest and don't sit passively. If you don't say that you're interested, many attendings will think that we want to let them study for their exams. And so they, they don't want to give you more work. So you have to show your interest in order to get all these projects. Next, if you want to level up, then to do proper research, then you do need a master's degree or even PhD. So depending on the type of field you're going into, you, you do need proper research training. Okay, next question. How can one work to gain research opportunities and get published? To piggyback on what I said before, one way is to detect cases from clinical rounds. Second is to find people in your department or within your institution, somebody who is well published. Clinical expertise is different from research expertise because they are two separate two different skill sets. Some mistakes, people are like, oh, this person is always the best at understanding how to manage a patient. But to write a paper, to think about the research project, those are completely different skills. And so when you find somebody where you can work with them, it makes sure that it's not just the clinical expertise, but actual research expertise. You can see if they have published paper, if they have mentored people before, then you can ask to show your interest. And so at this point, um, you may just want to join a project. It may not be the topic that you may eventually go into, but what you can do is you want to join in to learn the process. How do you write a paper? How do you start an IRB? You want to go in and help out and also to learn in the process. If you start from the very beginning, don't expect that your paper is going to be published until two or three years because the whole research project itself takes time. And sometimes I've seen mistakes where people join in hoping to get their name on a paper. When you start off, really, what you want to do is to contribute and bring value as much as possible.
Next question, as an IMG, should I take an extra year to join a volunteer research position? So this is a tricky one. It depends on the person, when you have graduated, whether you are an American that, that graduated outside of the US or a non-American who graduated outside of the US. The reason being, what is really important when residency programs are looking for matching your residence is not only the research, but how close they are from the graduation date, how they how comfortable they feel like you can jump into the system and start becoming a doctor. So if you are so far out, like four or five years outside of medical graduation and then taking another extra year to do research, it's not really going to benefit you as much. Instead, what you really want to do is focus on finding clinical observership. But if you are a recent graduate and you want to get into the most competitive program and you actually feel like there is possibility of you getting into research and faculty and academia in the future, yes, doing one extra year and building the skills will benefit you. But don't just do a research a volunteer here just to improve your CV, just to get into the US to get a residency program because the skills are different from what you need for, for residency. If you like these type of videos, put some questions in a comment. What I'll do is I'll compile these questions and create another Q&A in the future. All right, next question. How do you find collaborators? This is a wonderful question because in order to publish multiple papers in a year, the best way is to have collaborators. And if you're new, how do you find it, right? Who is going to work with you? How do you get started? I would say building a collaborator network is an active process. It's, it's not something you just wait for it to happen. You actually have to build it. So think of it also like a networking event where you are always building this team of people. I make it very intentional where I have a block in my weekly schedule, which is called a collaborator block, where I am actively emailing people to see, hey, can you introduce me this person to that so I can talk to them? Or I would try to schedule a meeting with somebody from a different department, or I would email a particular researcher. For example, when you look at journal articles, if that topic is of interest to you, what you can do is look at the corresponding author and email them, say, hey, I read your paper, maybe ask a few questions, I admire your work. Just say, you don't have to ask for anything. I think one of the most important thing is to serve first, to bring value, just say, I enjoy your work because research is hard. And a lot of times research papers don't get cited. Nobody really reads it, who knows, right? So just have hearing from somebody saying, hey, I appreciate your work and I think it's moving signs will make the other person feel re really good. So that is also bringing value. It's going to take years before this network gets bigger. And as I do this more frequently, then what I realize is, now I know this person has a certain expertise and another person has this interest, then I try to connect them together. So again, it's very intentional, not just wait for things to happen. All right, next question. Should I write a book chapter or should I focus more on writing a research paper? So I get this all the time. It's nice to have a book, but when you're starting off, writing a research paper has a higher return of investment. Because if you recall earlier, the currency of academia is research paper. Book, you can have it in your CV, you can start it some time ago, it's just that it, it takes so long to get it published. For example, if you write a book chapter, now you have eight other authors you have to wait for. Then they have to go through another round of editing. Then they have to send it to publisher. Okay. Research papers, when you submit it, even though the peer review process is somewhat lengthy, three to six months, it's too much faster than having a book, which can only be published two or three years later. So if you want to start, really start focusing on publishing research paper first before doing book chapters. All right, next question. What is the most challenging thing about research? So this one can be very variable. Personally, I find data analysis the most challenging because I like to do large epidemiology studies and the data sets are usually messy, not in a nice CSV or tabular form. I have to merge them, I have to clean them. So that part is the most challenging. And then the second challenging part where I see a lot of people having as well is finishing the project from the start to finish. So you can start a project, but not completing it. So where do people get stalled? Maybe it could be the data analysis part, or it could be you finish a project, but getting from the writing 
all the way to publication because that is a whole another process and a lot of people they like doing the research but don't like writing and so that is also the second most challenging part and that was how i struggled with initially and i work very hard to improve the writing piece and that's why i want to share all these information on this youtube channel so that people don't have to struggle as much as i did next question how do you get motivated to write oh so what i've learned is that it's really difficult to get motivated to write you can't wait for inspiration I have since adopted my writing as a profession. That means I treat it as my paid profession, paid job, instead of just a side thing or a hobby or something I do at the side. If it's my job, means I need to schedule it on my calendar. It is my day job. I need to do it. I get paid for this. And so now I'm like, okay, this is my responsibility. Like how I go into medicine, I see my patient and this is my job, my responsibility to make sure I call them, I make sure I get the labs, I make sure I talk to them properly. And so I treat that very seriously. That's the same way how I treat writing. I make sure I write every day. I make sure that I learn about it, improve on it, and also teach it. So in medicine, we see one, do one, teach one. In writing, I try to do the best to follow this tradition. I learn. I write and I teach. One more point about motivation is consistency. Consistency builds discipline. And ever since I changed my schedule, wake up the same time every day, get to bed the same time every day, write most of the time, if I can write the same time every day, I have this very strict schedule that when I get this, I need to start writing. I don't have to make a decision. Oh, do I need to write today or not? It's more, okay, this is time I need to go start writing. And because I do that consistently, now, as soon as I get into the writing block, words start flowing. And also the second thing I do is copy work. And the more you do copy work, you have trained your mind that as soon as your fingers touch the keyboard, Okay, it's time for the brain to go from brain synthesis to writing. So that is a few tips, consistency, doing a lot of copy work, just do it over and over again and doing the same thing, doing the same time every day. That is my trick. And then the second point I want to make is that sometimes the goal must be big enough. If, you, if your goals are not big enough and the payoff is not good enough, then your motivation is not there. Next question, what if I do all of this work but decide not to join academia? Will it be a waste? So this is a wonderful question. Completing a research paper, not just saying I'm doing a research, but actually completing a research project means that you have gained many skills, not just the research part of things, but transferable skills that can be applied in different industries and different aspects of medicine. So watch this video to learn more about transferable skills you gain when you publish research papers, how to use them to your advantage.